we think choices are made in the moment. And, and that's really not the case. If you want to grab an orange and squeeze it, the orange doesn't, it doesn't choose. Am I going to let out orange juice? Or am I going to let out grape juice? Am I going to let out apple juice? No, no, no. No, when you squeeze an orange, whatever's in the orange is going to come out. Whatever's in the grape is going to come out. Unraveling of the topic so that you'll be able to get a better understanding of it. Recently returned from a trip abroad. Uh, he spoke uh, internationally in Africa, all over. He is the epitome of what decisiveness is all about. So please take your copious notes, like, share, comment on this so that we can get this message across. Sakoni, are you there? All right, all right. Amen, amen. I am so appreciative of God for this opportunity. And no, I'm not in my my studio area. I'm in my truck. But I tell you what, this is going to be a powerful message because I know God actually woke me up yesterday morning with this message. And the title is The Process of Decisiveness. The process of decisiveness. Coming from 1 Samuel chapter 17, very familiar passage of scripture, David and Goliath. Uh, but the first step that we need to do when we're going to be decisive or make a decision is we are presented with the choice. We are presented with a choice. And that means that we have something to choose from. When you look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 23, it says, and when he was talking with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name, one of the armies of the Philistines that spake according to the same words, and David heard them. David actually heard the statements, the boasting that, you know, Goliath, the taunting that Goliath was making against the armies of Israel. And in that taunting, in that, in that, that, in that bullying, if you will, David heard it. Now, at that point, he could have did what the rest of the men did in verse number 24, because verse 24 says, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. They had a choice. Are we going to fight or are we going to flight? Are we going to stand or are we going to run? David was presented with the same. He saw the same thing everybody else did, but he made a decision that something needed to be done. Presented with the choice. In order for us to be decisive, the process, we have to be given something to choose from. And a lot of people think, well, okay, if you're going down a road, you have to be presented with a fork in the road for you to make a decision. You don't even have to, you don't even have to make a decision there. If you stop going down the road, that's a decision. If you decide that you're not going to decide, that's a decision. If you decide to turn back, that's a decision. So you don't necessarily have to have a fork in the road. You can make a decision wherever you are. So the first process that you have to choose, you have a choice. What is it that you're going to do? David, when he was when he heard the lies, he had a choice. Am I going to hightail it with the rest of these guys? Or am I going to stand firm in what I know God is able to do? And see, the problem with, I think the problem with our understanding of choosing is that we, we think choices are made in the moment. And, and that's really not the case. If you want to grab an orange and squeeze it, the orange doesn't, it doesn't choose. Am I going to let out orange juice? Or am I going to let out grape juice? Am I going to let out apple juice? No, no, no. No, when you squeeze an orange, whatever's in the orange is going to come out. Whatever's in the grape is going to come out. Whatever's in the apple is going to come out. So choices aren't necessarily made in the moment. They're made beforehand. David's relationship with God was established before he met Goliath. He even talked to Saul about how God had delivered a bear and a lion into his hands. That decision to fight for God was made before he even saw Goliath, before he even knew who he was. So in the process of us making a decision, in the process of us being decisiveness, our choices are made every single day. I was sharing with somebody and I told him, I said, listen, pressure doesn't, doesn't create character. Pressure reveals character. 
going back to that same, going back to that same example, pressure on the orange doesn't create orange juice. It just reveals what's in the orange. Pressure on the grape doesn't create grape juice. It just reveals what's in the grape. So we have to look at what, what, what are we putting in in order for us to make the right decisions. So there's a process of decisiveness. You're presented with the choice. We have a choice every day. What are we gonna feed ourselves? Brushing our teeth one time doesn't, doesn't give us good oral hygiene, but brushing them every day does. Doing exercises one time doesn't give us a healthy body, but doing it every day does. So there's a process of decisive. We have to make sure that we are making the right choice so that when the big thing come, like what they was facing, it's not too hard for us to understand. But the second thing in the process of decisiveness is we have to weigh our options. In verse number 26, it says, and David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, what shall be done unto the man that killed his Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David knew who he was fighting for. Not only was he fighting for his country, but he was representing his God. He was fighting for his country, but he was representing his God. The options in David's mind, there weren't any. I'm not going to stand here and let this happen. I'm not going to stand here and let this, this little boy heard everything that everybody else heard. But he made a decision to do something about it. He was weighing the options. What happens to the person that kills us? What's the reward? What, what is the takeaway? What can I gain? What can I get? And see, a lot of us, we want to overlook the reward. What's the reward of this Christian life? Eternal life with our Heavenly Father. But not only that, we have some benefits right now. So many of us on act like we're not concerned about the benefits. But I'm telling you, one thing I know about God is he pays all his bills. Nobody knows what's going to be able to say, God, you owe me. You didn't take care of me. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Now, we may have it in my mind and in our time, but God, he meets everyone. God is not a deadbeat dad. Okay? He meets every one of our needs. So understanding that about him, it should make it easier for us to actually weigh our options as to what we're doing in reference to what God has called and given us to do. How decisive are we in reference to what God has laid to our charge? What are the options what are we looking at? What is it that, what are the benefits? So many of us, we don't take the time to look at the benefit. David wanted to know, <laughs> What do I get? <laughs> what do I get for doing it? What, what are the benefits? Because if you have those in mind, it's not hard for you to actually put in the work where you know what the reward is. The third thing in the cycle, okay, so the first thing was you are presented with a choice. The second thing is you weigh the options. But the third thing is you decide which way to go. You decide to take action. If you're going to be decisive, you have being decisive doesn't just mean that you decide and you sit down. It means that you do something. David went out and fought Goliath. He went out there and he actually put in the work. So when it comes to us as men, when it comes to us as children of God, what are we doing that testifies to our relationship with God. What are we doing that testifies to our relationship with God? I remember several years ago when we came up with our four pillars and how I was asked to speak during the month of, in fact, what he talked about, consistency. And I said consistency was really the second leg of a four-leg race. And they were like, wait a minute, okay, what are you talking about? I say, well, like before you can be consistent, you have to be committed. Because without commitment, there is no consistency. So you have to be committed first. But once you're committed, then you can be consistent. But if you're consistent at whatever it is you're doing, you're going to be successful. But if but success over time, it leaves a legacy. 
we talk about these four pillars for the National Men's Prayer Call. Maturity, decisiveness, consistency, and strength. And you know what? As I was looking at that, those kind of parallel because in order for you to be mature, you have to be committed. You have to commit to something in order for you to exercise and show your maturity. But again, that maturity is going to help you be more decisive. You're going to make the right decisions. But then after you made the decisions, you have to be consistent at it. Because without any consistency, I'm telling you, you won't get any better. You won't get, you won't get, but you won't experience success without consistency. But when you talk about strength, strength is where legacy comes in. Because the, because the reality is, if the only impact we make is while we're here on earth, we've made a weak impact. Our impact, our strength should go beyond us. That's where our legacy is. Our strength should go beyond where we are right now. The impact and the influence that we make on the people around us, on those who, who we've been called to serve, that strength, when you duplicate, what did Christ do? He made disciples. And he told us to go make disciples. He, he multiplied himself. His legacy. What about us? What are we doing to impact the world in which we live? Those people we've been called to serve, all of us have influence. What are we doing with it? But it takes us understanding the process of decisiveness in order for us to be able to make a difference where we are. So again, just to recap, just to recap, the process of being decisive or, or the process of decisiveness. Number one, you, you are presented with an option. You are presented with something, a choice. And again, we, we make choices every single day. But then after the choice, we weigh our options. What are we doing? What, what, what? Okay, if I take this road or if I make this decision, if I take this job, if I marry this woman, if I live in this house, if I buy this car, what are the options? We need to make sure that we are engaged, not just from an emotional standpoint, but from an intellectual standpoint, and also being led by the Spirit of God. But weighing the options, then, then none of that makes any difference if you don't do anything. None of it makes any difference if you don't do anything. And what we also fail to realize is people are watching us. I was riding with my younger son the other day, and he actually told me, he said, you know, Dad, when you kind of lay stuff out, because, you know, of course, you know, we riding around and having to drop him off, pick him up, do this and do that. He said that he tries to sit and figure out if the route that I'm taking or if the process that I'm doing is the most effective and efficient. I was so happy that he even thought about that, that he even considered that 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 was in his thought process because I've been trying to teach him, that, listen, one day you're going to step into my shoes. One day you're going to be a father, you're going to be a husband, and you're going to have responsibilities, and you're going to have to know how to navigate when it comes to the things that are concerning your family. So you're going to have to make decisions. And you don't, I tell my children all the time, listen, you don't wait till you become an adult to learn how to be one. Now is the time, and this is the place you learn the, you learn the skills you need to be an adult. Because I tell them, I said, listen, you don't wait till you get to school to put your school clothes on, don't you? They said, no. I said, you don't wait till you get to church to put your church clothes on, do you? They said, no. I said, you don't wait till you get in the swimming pool to put your bathing suit on, do you? They said, no. I said, that's right. You always get ready somewhere else. You always get dressed somewhere else. Well, you don't wait till you become an adult to be one. So hearing him understand and work on that process is, is equipping him for when he stepped into my shoes. So I'm trying to leave a legacy even now with my children, but not just with those in my household. Anybody who will give me an audience, anybody who will listen, anybody who takes the time to actually pay attention to what God has given me to share with them, that's what I'm trying to pour into other people. I want to encourage every man and every person listening to this call today, don't take for granted the impact you can make. Don't take for granted the decisions you can make. Don't take for granted the example that you're setting. 
because there are so many people. You'd be surprised how many people are watching you. How many people are looking at you? How many people are looking up to you? How many people are patterning themselves after some part of your life? Not everything. They say none of us perfect, but when they see something good, in fact, when they see something consistent, you'd be surprised how many people are tuning in to you. And if you miss that, you will live any kind of way and wonder why is everybody else doing it? Because they are watching you. Understanding the, the responsibility that comes with walking this Christian life is all about job. And we need to make sure that we put our best foot forward. But that comes from us understanding the process of decisiveness. That we've been given choices. We have to weigh the options and then we have to take action. Now, just because I'm sharing our stuff with you don't mean I have perfected it because I have not. But I tell you one thing, I'm putting in the work and putting in the effort to make sure that I represent who God intended for me to be. And I want you to do the same. I want to encourage you that you have an opportunity to change somebody's life. And you can do that with the process of decisiveness. So I ask you today, are you going to make a decision? Are you going to make the decision to be who God had called and intended for you to be? Or are you going to let that decision go by the wayside? Are you going to miss that opportunity to change somebody else's life, starting with your own? All of us have a chance to make a difference. The question is, are we going to do it? Brother, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I am just... I take notes all the time, but I, I, I found myself just getting caught up into your message because inadvertently you brought you brought this whole thing to a head, the process of decisiveness. You know, most of us are caught up into indecisiveness, which, which you showed and the folly and the consequences of indecisiveness. And often, even when we decide not to decide, that's a decision. And that decision has its own ramifications. But you you just broke down um, what you thought were the three core areas. But in reality, you broke down the code. And I looked at it and I was like, I see patterns in words. I see patterns in presentation. And your presentation, you said that there were three distinct components that we needed to be focused and, and cognitive of choice, the choices that we make. And I've often said this, that when we step out that door, especially as men, we're confronted with so many choices, the choices for this or that or the other, some good, some bad, some indifferent, but they're choices that we have to make. And and, and so and they're so overwhelming that at times that causes us frustration and anxiety because we know that we have to live with the results of our choices, and then the options, that the, uh, the choices that we have to make are predicated by so many options. It could be this or that. We could lose or gain this reward, this risk. Uh, there's all of that just tied up into that neat little bundle of, of those options. And then you said that once we are confronted and given a choice, look, uh, con uh, consider the options that we have to make a decision, that we have to decide. And when we decide, what does that mean? That means that we have, um, that we have opted. We, we said this is what we're going to do. But this deciding is, uh, is, is one thing. And I think that the one element that, um, that was missing that I saw in the, uh, in the, uh, your, your presentation was the E, uh, that spells out that word code, C-O-D-E, choice, options, decide, and engage is the E in the, in, in the code. So you have to actually do the action word. And in doing, we're able to achieve more. In doing, we're able to open ourselves up and to uh, position ourselves so that we can actually begin to do what God has called us to do. Well, man, I, it was just a masterful success line that you that you 
shared what the process was and the necessity for being able to crack that code because we're looking at a life and we're wondering exactly what is going on how do we how do we uh, make decisions that are going to impact us and our families and those that are connected to us how do we make those decisions with confidence and with with clarity and conviction when we're confronted with those decisions when we're confronted with the options when we we have to make that decision and finally engage all of that is why the national men's prayer call was developed in the first place for men to be able to have a clearinghouse a place where they could come on a consistent and regular basis and get a word that was going to strengthen them that was going to empower them that will allow them to be able to to elevate to another level of the success that they were designed to be able to to bring about so uh again i want to just give just to thank you um, for that just eloquent word when you talked about the impact when you talked about the legacy uh, that strength becomes when you talk about about adulting and what it means for for young people to to see the pattern that we have had to walk uh you know the, the bible talks about walking in hind step and that hind h-i-n-d was a, a sort of uh antelope that was able to walk on the the mountain crags that looked like they were just inches apart and they wouldn't fall because they were sure-footed and if you walk in the steps that they're they're taking you're sure not to fall as well well those are the adulting principles that we learn from all those options all of that when men wake up every morning they're confronted with that that ordeal they're confronted with that reality they have to make choices they're confronted with options they have to decide. They have to engage. And even if you, you choose not to engage, it's an engagement that is pulling you back away from the fullness of what God wants for you. Brother, that was a rich, rich word. And I encourage all of you. <laughs>